Welcome. You're listening to Sport Econ 101, the show where we discuss sports topics from a business perspective. I'm your host, Edward Brown, along with my co-host, Vern Glenn of CBS affiliate KPIX TV. Now, again, the audience uh, can't see this, but uh, we're recording this for YouTube, and, and I'm looking at that handsome face, smiling and waving to the camera. That's right. <laughs> and, Hello, America. Uh, and, yeah, and uh, hopefully uh, Russell will uh, join us in the next segment. And, Mr. Jackman. Uh, Mr. Jackman, yes. At each commercial break, we're going to ask a sport trivia question. And um, it, we're talking general sports, and I decided I'm going to make these picture, these uh, questions a little easier this time. We're not going to stump you so bad. And uh, let's see. We've got a few things to uh, to cover here. Sure. Um, when, we, uh, when we come back, uh, the XFL filed BK. Did, yeah, well, did, well, imagine that. Yeah, didn't they like just start not that long ago? Yeah, they just started, and then they like, and then they like pounded the table, going, "We're going to continue to play in 2021. Yeah. COVID 19s not going to beat us." And then, boom, out Oops. of business. Yeah, yeah. thanks oh, for your service. Yeah. Uh, we'll be disbanding now. Yeah, I mean, d didn't the didn't the USFL last at least? A couple of years? Yeah, but the USFL didn't have to go through a pandemic. No, that's true. Oh, no, I'm not blaming anybody. I just, I was just thinking it's like, oh, man, these guys just started and suddenly, boom, there you are. Yeah. All right. This segment of Sport Econ 101 is sponsored by Pacific Private Money. Still providing mortgage investments that are currently yielding 7.5% secured by real estate. Doesn't get any more conservative than that. Check them out at PacificPrivateMoney.com. Stay with us. You're listening to Sport Econ 101. We're going to be right back. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, along with Vern Glenn and Russell Jackman joined us. How are you, Mr. Jackman? Finally, yeah, not great. Worn out. It, it wasn't uh, spring. The, the concept of spring break is completely fictitious when your kids go nowhere. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. See, that's, that's the thing. I, I, uh, I mean, I guess There's I'm no very break for us. My, my kids now are a little older. Back, now school's back in session. Yeah, spring uh, spring break means no break for the parents. No. Absolutely, no, it really wasn't, and uh, so I'm more worn out now than if I had actually gone on vacation. Yeah, but you're lucky you have twins; they can take care of themselves, yeah. right? Not not exactly. Okay, all right. Hey guys, getting on to sports here. So um, uh, just before we went to break, we were talking about how just three days after suspending operations and laying off its employees among the coronavirus pandemic, the XFL has formally filed for bankruptcy. And, sure. I mean, and this was their first year, wasn't it? I guess Vince needed to get that listed as an essential business as well. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, there was no... Uh, that, that he's managed to con Florida into <laughs> listing wrestling as an essential business. And with the tax deadline extension, he's got plenty of time to sit down with his people and talk about what a huge loss it's going to be. Oh, that's, and, that's, good. that's going to be fun. You know, yeah. I, I'm glad that Vince McMahon spent all that money on the XFL instead of for health benefits and for uh, 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 testing for COVID virus for his employee. All that money that he spent on the wasted on the XFL is money he turns around and says he doesn't have for taking care of the wrestlers and, and treating them like human beings. Hey, but you know something, Mr. Jackman? If, 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 if Vince McMahon is as smart as I think he is, I'd like to take a look at those books because yeah. I wonder how much of his own money he actually had to spend. You uh, would need point. probably the help of the U.S. military to get him to, to, sh get him to show you his books. There's, there's probably been no less of an, uh, less honest an operator of a business in the history of business than Vince McMahon. So, yeah, if you wanted to, he would never show you his books. He would, I mean, the guy makes billions of dollars and spends so, I don't think there's ever been a person that's made as much money and spent as little on the health and welfare of his employees uh, as Vince McMahon. Maybe yeah, but like, he wasn't, he was trying to make the XFL something big. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, it, he's, it's not his fault about the pandemic. No, but I think there have been coal miner owners and diamond mine owners and asbestos sure. manufacturers that have cared more about the health of their employees than Vince McMahon. Well, now, the, that, now, I must, <laughs> if I may jump in and clarify for you, YouTube audience, uh, the opinions on this show are our own. <laughs> and, uh, 
<laughs> Mr. Jackman said it. It's how Mr. Jackman feels. Yeah. I don't think you're going to go and actually find something in print backed up by two sources. But again, Mr. Jackman's opinions are his own. That's yeah. right. But it's been a lifetime of watching what Vince McMahon does and how he treats people. And I don't think you'd find anyone that would say Vince McMahon cares about his employees. He's, he is a meat grinder. He cares, the, he cares about his employees the way that a sausage manufacturer cares about the health of, his, of, of the uh, pigs that make the sausage. He just grinds them into them. <laughs> and then as soon as he's done with them, he tosses them on a pile and lets them rot. And I mean, I worked with a guy, uh, 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 Evan Ginsberg, who's written, who's made a movie called 350 Days, that you can see for free online now. Um, uh, you can stream it online. And it, it, it's brutal about what that business, what wrestling does to the people when they're done with it. Yeah, but then why doesn't another uh, operator come up and treat their people better? I mean, someone's got to invest that money, right? Well, they, they, there have been other feds that have come up. There's still other feds that exist that do treat their employees better. But it's hard to stop something that's got the massive momentum that uh, the WWE has. But then again, we can yeah. talk to Ronda Rousey about how much fun it is to be a WWE wrestler. Well, when you sign on for the WWE, you know you're a glorified gladiator. Yeah. Just, just, yeah. Like, just like the NFL gladiator. and some of these other uh, power leagues. I mean, you're, you're a glorified gladiator performing in front of a coliseum slash a stadium, an audience, and and when you can't do it anymore, they carry it right on out and bring the next one in. Yeah. yeah. No, I was um, over the, uh, the the last week, I watched a show called Dark Side of the Ring, which I don't know if you guys have ever watched, but they talked about the very tragic story of both Eddie Guerrero and, and uh, Chris Benoit. And they really also, you know, highlight the fact that Vince McMahon is just someone that doesn't care. I mean, he, he cared about how it looked to have those wrestlers die on his company. But when it came to really caring about what the ultimate fate was of the CTE and the concussions yeah. and all the other things that wound up giving these guys such terrible health conditions, he just walked away so, from it. So uh, That's basically what he was trying to do with the XFL. So why do you why do you think the wrestling uh, federation doesn't have a? I'm assuming they don't have a union. No, um, uh, Jesse Ventura tried to create a wrestlers union, and he was kicked out of uh, the WWE because of it. So no, I mean Vince McMahon, who's, he he does it because he has so much political clout that he's gotten away with treating people like they were like they were pieces of meat, and the the federal government. He plays this game where he says everybody is an independent contractor. They're not really athletes. They're really active. But then when they try to treat them like actors, he goes, wait a minute, they're athletic performers. They're not really active. And he keeps getting wrestlers to fall through the cracks so that nobody can help them or represent them. Well, it's sort of like uh, baseball players uh, being, you know, not part of the antitrust rules. Right, right? but at least they have a union. At least they sure. have a player yeah. union. They have representation, and they have a way of making sure that they're not. I mean, right now, the WWE is, is running shows again, live shows again, but they're not doing any real testing, and there's no real precautions to make sure that these guys are and ladies that are wrestling and all the support personnel are safe. And I don't think he's ever going to. He's just going to say, you know what? You think you're tough. You think you're so, you know, you're... you're and we have so many people that want to do this. If you don't do it, we'll get someone to take your place. That's always been Vince McMahon's sort of uh, 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 modus operandi. And thank God for other sports that don't treat their athletes like that. You look at how other sports manage their athletes, and none of them treat people as disposably as Vince McMahon. You know, if there wasn't an audience watching wrestling, do you think that the wrestlers would have the same attitude? Because I got to think that some of these guys, they're big and strong, and it's sort of like, hey, this is my uh, glory days. It's sort of like, uh, you know, being called in to, to give an audition and, and perform on Broadway or, or in a movie or TV, right? Yeah, well, a lot, of these guys are, a lot of these guys are former football players themselves yeah. that have crossed over. Whether it's yeah, an injury or whatever, you know, it, it's it, it, it kind of led them to 
WWE because they're physically gifted and they are elite athletes. Yeah, but he, he has a never ending stream of them. There's always people in the world that don't mind, you know, burning the candle at both ends if it means they can be famous. And yeah. uh, that was another thing that I was talking about with, with my friend Evan on our, our other podcast. Like, I don't do enough podcasts these days. <laughs> <laughs> but but we have a wrestling podcast, and we were just talking about how there's so the the the, the quest for fame yeah. drives people to do stuff that no, ordinary people would say. Oh yeah, especially in the like of the Olympics too. Hey guys, we're gonna go well, not to just our, not just that, but reality TV too. I mean that's oh the, yeah, that's, that's, that's the base. That's the base of it. People yeah. that want to come on and be famous. That's, that's right. right. And do all kinds of crazy things. Okay, guys, here's our first uh, commercial trivia question. And uh, Russell, before you came on, I, I said we had a couple of fairly easy softball questions. And oh, we'll, I was uh, going to come up with some trivia questions. Oh, okay, well, oh we'll, that's we'll, right. We'll, we'll, yeah. We'll yeah last question. week's show, Russell wanted to bring some. If you yeah, have like, some. He wouldn't be on, you know, curling or. or no, I know. Don't worry. There's no curling. There's no curling. Badminton or Marvel. whatever. Yeah. That's okay. You know what? In the next segment, you can bring up a couple of your questions. But here's one now. What underdog knocked out Mike Tyson in Tokyo in 1990? Okay, oh, yeah, I, I saw that. that. Yeah, I figured. You got to make you guys happy and make it, give you an easy one, all right? All right, stay with us. You are listening to Sports Econ 101. We are going to be right back. Don't touch that dial. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Edward Brown here along with Vern Glenn and Russell Jackman. Our first <laughs> trivia question was, what underdog knocked out Mike Tyson in Tokyo in 1990? Come on. Oh, Buster, oh, Buster Douglas. Douglas. Buster Douglas. Oh, yeah. I had an interesting mini story about that. I, I was in college when that happened. And um, uh, uh, we were going to – Saturday night's main event was on the that same night. And we were going to – we usually have these big Saturday night main event parties. But we were all tuned in to the Buster Douglas. Th remember, that fight was going to be on pay-per-view, and it was so unpopular. They had to shift it back to HBO. Well, nobody knew who the hell he was. Oh, yeah. Exactly. yeah. Really wanted to buy it. So, so, every, so we just, it, it, the, the allure was, okay, how fast can Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson knock him out? waste yeah. this guy? You know, yeah. can he do it inside of a round like he normally does? Yeah, because you look at Buster Douglas, he kind of looked out of shape. Oh, he was. Well, he was, just, well, he was just this big guy. He was yeah. just a huge, huge guy. But Mike and, Tyson uh, was totally out of shape. And so uh, we said that was the idea. We were like, oh, okay, well, we'll tune in for the Buster Douglas fight. We'll watch it for five minutes, and then we'll switch on over to Saturday night's main event. And we never got to see Saturday night's main event because one round turned into what? Like it was nine rounds or something like that? Yeah, and, yeah, and, and, and the big thing, taking up on what Mr. Jackman said, yeah, uh, Tyson had not really been in the gym on a regular basis, and his trainer, Kevin Rooney, was, was screaming at him all the time. When are you going to get in here? When are you going to end here? And it, and it really, I don't want to say it came to blows, but it, but it, it, it really became a, a fractured relationship because Rooney, a former boxer himself, realized that you know, Tyson's just not putting the work in. And then so here comes Buster Douglas. And then, uh, like the old cliche, he, he had a puncher's chance. And, wow, yeah. that, that was something. I remember, but he, he wasn't getting up. Sugar Ray Leonard was yeah. on the color commentary, and I remember his famous words, uh, 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 it, it, it's over, <laughs> and it was. <laughs> you know, you know it me, in the movie Rocky Three, when uh, Rocky, uh, before he, he gets to um, uh, Clubber Lang in the, in the first one, you know, he's kind of just making a little bit of a, a I don't say he's making a mockery of it, but everybody is. You know, girls are coming up to him, giving a kiss. He's just on the little bike. He's not putting right. the effort in. And Mickey Esta says, you know, get rid of this thing and get back to the gym. Right, right, right. Yeah, very, yeah. very similar. Yep. Uh, so, Mr. Jackman, um, you said that you have a couple of trivia questions for us. Oh, oh yeah, wow. yeah, I do. Because one of the things that I did in the last week, too, was watch the Andre the Giant documentary hmm. back. Because remember, you guys asked who uh, the four people that I would have oh, yeah. barbecue with. And Andre the Giant was one of them, as long as he brought his own food. Like, yeah, I, that guy, I, I was reading that he, he would drink like a whole barrel full of, of beer. Well, I, that's one of the trivia questions. Yeah. Ric Flair sat down with him one evening and drank beer with him. Yeah. How, now, apparently, this is a world record. How many beers did Andre the Giant drink in one sitting? Well, it was at least a case. That, that, that's that's in the morning. We're talking <laughs> at night. We're talking at night when he was, wanted to get drunk. 
Forget uh, about like when he was just, you know, wetting his whistle. Uh, a, keg, a keg. Well, I don't know how many beers equal a keg. Just try try the number of beers. Oh. You mean, is it, is for, for like a regular, a regular yeah, mug 12 of ounce. beer. How many? Oh, okay. I'm going to say 50. 50 is a good number. More than 50. Higher? 70? 100? 106, according to Ric Flair. 106 what? beers. No wonder, no wonder he had hardly any money. Uh, 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 um, uh, 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 Who keeps track of that? <laughs> uh, director Rob Reiner. How many he times did he have to get up and go to the bathroom? Yeah. <laughs> he was working, oh, yeah, he did. But yeah. when Rob, Rob Reiner said that he personally, when he was do, working with Andre the Giant on uh, uh, The Princess Bride, Bride yeah. Yeah. said that he witnessed him drink about 7,000 calories worth of alcohol in a day. Well, you, when you weigh six, what did you weigh, 550 pounds or something? Yes. Yeah. Well, something along those lines. Nobody, I think, really wanted to measure his weight in the end. But I had a feeling you guys might not know that, that numerical. I mean, that's got to be a world record. Who else could drink 106 beers in one, say, in one evening sitting. and not just die? Not yeah. to be morbid, I'm just kind of wondering, what was the size of the coffin? That had to be specially constructed for him. Well, Paul, a guy. Uh, wow. I can't remember the, the the guy who weighed how many? How many Paul bears? Can you yeah. imagine carrying that thing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have at least ten. A yeah. lot of heavy weightlifters. I don't know if his body was cremated or not. That that's the bigger question. But somebody way, in the YouTube audience will know. Wait a minute! Yeah. I didn't. I didn't. I read that he did get cremated, and the ashes weighed like twenty pounds. Jeez. <laughs> that that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he was he was you know larger than life and basically in a lot of ways larger in death, you know, wow. than 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 the average person. So I had a few other Andre the Giant things like how big was his his boot, you know? Uh, oh, you know, like and, size twenty seven or something. I think it was size twenty four. Twenty four, yeah. Well, who? Um, Gosh, I'm trying to remember now because they even did a commercial on this uh, in basketball. Uh, the guy who had the, just enormous feet, like size 22. Uh, oh, Lanier. Oh, oh, uh, Lanier. Oh, Bob Lanier. Bob Lanier, yeah, yeah. Bob yeah. Lanier, the, I mean, the biggest feats in basketball. Yeah, size 22. <laughs> size 22 boats. <laughs> Bob Lanier, he later on was an assistant coach for the Golden State Warriors. Oh, yes. I didn't know that. Okay. Oh, yeah. Hey, oh, hey yeah. guys, uh, moving on here. Uh, Mark Cuban says he may take a run at being the next president. I'm, I'm just It's a sports question only because he owns the Mavericks. Um, you think he'll actually throw his hat in the ring as an independent? I would vote for Popovich and Kerr before I'd vote for Cuban. Hey, I'm wearing a Popovich oh, yeah, and Kerr shirt. I'm, I'm I, wearing I, I a Popovich and Kerr that. shirt. Yeah. But, but are Popovich and Kerr running as president and vice president? Well, I mean, Popovich would be president, I mean, and then Kerr would be vice president. No, but are they running? If the NBA well, no. stays shut no, down, no. <laughs> no. They'll no. be free to run. I was just kind of curious. It's funny because I, uh, I remember when Mark Cuban, you know, when he first took over the Mavs, uh, and, he, you know, he was just, uh, you know, arrogant and, uh, you know, explosive, and he, he, was, he was quite hated. Um, but it's funny because after watching him on Shark Tank uh, for quite a while now, he seems to have uh, – leveled off a bit and uh for the most part seems like a pretty good guy mark's had hits and he's had misses i mean sometimes he's right on target and i, I agree with him then again he did say that youtube was a huge mistake and he said it would be the world's biggest lawsuit i think he's sort of been proven a little wrong over yeah. time that youtube was just a flat flash in the pan and go I will, away i will say this though i, I think cuban if memory serves was the was the first of the of the younger new breed of NBA owner? Yeah. And so when he tried to you know essentially you know take a seat at the big table with the other old grizzled established get off my lawn <laughs> owners, it, it just it just didn't it just didn't meld. And yeah. so uh, yeah. so yeah, so he was he was the kid. He was the punk. Made himself a lot of money off cable TV, and now he owns the Dallas Mavericks. But uh, uh, he has come of age in a large regard. And uh, for those who uh, uh, didn't catch that reference, I believe you're talking about Grand Torino and Clint Eastwood. Clint, that, that, get that off that my lawn. Very same, yes, exactly. <laughs> well, the great, one thing about Cuban, sort of the anti-Vince McMahon in a lot of ways, 
that he treats his players really special. He was the yeah. first one that I can remember to say that, you know, players need to have their own workout routines. You have to have special chefs for them. You have to have, you know, uh, uh, the, the equipment needs to be really modernized. Uh, for I mean, I guess you compare him to, like, uh, uh, David Sterling. And I think those two were like on complete opposite ends. Yeah, but uh, would, right. was Cuban doing it for his own personal benefit? Right? But he, I think he does genuinely care about the people that work. I think he for, does. Yeah. You know, but the problem is if you if you don't work for Mark Cuban, you tend to hate his guts. Yeah. Well, the, the, first, the first owner I came across that, that that truly put his players first. I mean, yeah, he. He, he wasn't in the modern world to give to give you the latest and greatest equipment and all that stuff. But the first owner that I came acquainted with that that, that really took care of his players was Eddie DeBartolo Jr. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it seems like all the players uh, loved working with him. Yeah, he made he made he made them all he made them all millionaires. And, Got them all and, started in business. And yeah. in the case of one player, Jeff Fuller, who who was 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 tragically injured in a game and could never play football again. DeBartolo said, hey, I'm going to play his health benefits uh, for the rest of his life, and he did. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's just, that's it's just amazing. Um, all right, guys, before we go to a, uh, another break, I want you to think about, for the next segment, uh, your favorite sports movies. Oh, okay, Good great. Time. Time one, right? <laughs> and then, uh, outside the wrestling, wrestling realm, then I hope. Well, if that's one of your favorite movies, then that's okay. Hey, yeah. fighting with, hey you know what? Fighting with my family... Very good movie. Not, it was not a bad movie. Very good movie. I, I, I would suggest that as a as a not a bad date movie. Wait, what's yeah, it called? Fight, fighting with my family. Fighting with my family. A true story. What what's it about? It is about it, it was about the Paige. real life kind. Of, what, Paige, what's her name? Paige. Um, I forgot her last name, but it, uh, the, the fir, one of the first one of one of one of the first of the WWE divas. It was, ah, it was kind of kind it. of kind of how she. Uh, her background and how she came to fame and what she what she went on and did with it. Well, you know, it's interesting. My, my, my wife just watched a movie, uh, a documentary on Ronda Rousey, and she said it was very good. Kind of brought a little bit of tears to her eyes. She really yeah, well, really yeah, now, yeah, now things are a little bit different. Different things bring tears to Ronda's eyes, and it's not the WWE. Yeah. <laughs> Man. No. All right, guys, here's our uh, second trivia question. 60% of what professional athlete goes broke within five years of retiring? What sport are you thinking about here? Okay. There's only so many sports, and, and uh, I'll give you a hint. Curling is not one of them. Right? Yeah. No. So those no. guys, they, 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 they don't go broke at all. They make lots of money, right? Okay. Curling? No, I think they're already <laughs> broke to start with. <laughs> Maybe. All right. Stay with us. Sports Econ 101. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. One more time, I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glenn and Russell Jackman. Second trivia question, 60% of what professional athlete goes broke within five years of retiring? You know, statistical speaking is what we're, we're getting at here. I'll go, uh, I'll go NFL. Russell? And uh, we're not including pro poker as a sport, are we? We're not. No. Okay. Um, because I, I think a lot of people get, wind up you know, a couple turns of the cards, you could be. Uh, yeah, probably I'll within. With, uh, sure. I'll go just completely off the board and go NASCAR. No, it's actually the NBA. Wow. The NBA. The NBA. Okay. Yeah. You guys, they, you know, they make a lot of money yeah. quickly, but then. Yep. As Patrick Ewing said, I make a lot of money, but I spend a lot of money. Words mm -hmm. of wisdom, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, because to them, the way, the, way, the way they live their lives, it's like, it's like Monopoly money. Yeah. It's just, it just, it's just crazy. Yeah, How much funnels in, and they, and they just they, turn around. There's that place called the Gold Club in Atlanta. Yeah, that yeah. I think a lot of players leave their paychecks behind. Yeah, they just think that it's never going to end. I mean, that's that's kind of kind of a tough one there. Well, they're uh, on the road a lot, and I think when they're on the road a lot, that's where they spend a lot of money because they're not home with their families. I mean, with the NFL, you're uh, home. You know, you're yeah. only on the road eight eight weeks a year. You know, yeah, that's a that's a very good. Uh, uh, analysis. I wonder yeah. how much uh, that really is true about, like, if, they, if you look at, gee, do you, uh, you know, spend a lot of money on the road? Like, you know, what well, food, I guess, uh, they don't really cover all that when you're on the road, right? Let's wait until uh, the NFL opens up in Vegas, though, and we'll see how many uh, bankrupt NFL players there are. Yeah. 
you know, be kind of interesting with this uh, whole virus thing. Hey, before we get into the favorite movies, Christian McCaffrey. Uh, oh, boy, is he, is he, he got paid. It, is he, yeah, is he worth $16 million a year for four years, i.e. $64 million? He sells okay. a lot of tickets, Edward. He, fill, he fills that stadium, and he is, yeah. he is the number one most sought-after fantasy football player that you want on your roster. Huh. Let's put it this way. He's, he's the only guy I can think of that, that made the all-pro team, not the Pro Bowl, which is a popularity contest, yeah. all-pro at two different positions, first team. Yeah, I think, I, I think of a more of a tight end wide receiver type, and then now he's a running back. Well, he's you know? always been a running back. Yeah, but, but I, he's, had, he's had great hands as a receiver out of the backfield. So he, so he, he's, he's this dual threat guy. And in that Carolina Panthers offense, I mean, we we don't know about this new scheme, but in the Ron Rivera offense, he he flourished, and uh, and and he has produced every time. He's one of those guys. Every time he touches the ball, he is a threat. Yeah. to gain positive yards. I but mean, on the other hand, it's scary to put that much money in a focus player that, you know, we know that the length of a running back's career is in the average in the NFL four years. Yeah. And, I mean, I'm sorry, but the, the, the side of the road is littered with all sorts of carcasses of players who were great one year running backs and then – a year later, you never hear from. Them. And that, well, okay, so that's my point. Now, it's, I'm going to mention a couple of guys who, it's not that you don't hear from them again, but uh, lately, each time a player gets a big contract, they seem to have post lower stats. Uh, Todd Gurley, Le'Veon Bell, Ezekiel Elliott. I mean, they got these big contracts. And I wonder how much of it is, you know, once you're kind of like uh, feeling like financially you're set, how much, I mean, one on one part, you have to, feel like, okay, I got to prove myself because people are going to get upset that I got paid all this money and didn't produce. And then you have all the opposing players going, man, I'm going to get this guy. Yeah, I think it's being a target that makes it real, that makes shortens your career quite a bit. And, 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 and Edward, all of those guys you just mentioned are just known for running the football. None of them are known to be utilized the way Ed McCa uh, Christian, Christian McCaffrey, McCaffrey is yeah. used in that offense. And, and, sure. and, I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll give it to Christian, man. Good genes. His father yeah. played in the NFL yeah. for years with the Denver Broncos as a receiver. Yeah. And, and, and if anybody gets, can, can, can get great advice on playing the game, how to be a pro, and managing your money, it, it, it's, it's the McCaffrey family. Yeah. Didn't Ed play for the 49ers for a bit too? Ed did, yeah. To, oh yeah, before he went to Denver, it really, really, really made a name for himself. I thought he, I thought he was with Denver first. I think he was with Denver LA. first, and then he played a couple of years towards the end. Ah, uh, okay, okay. That could be because I, I, I remember him playing for the 49ers, but yeah, maybe it was uh, after he had a good career with. Uh, yeah, he wasn't. Better. He wasn't as big, but it's just. I mean, I hate to say it. Every running back is one knee injury away from yeah. being an elite guy to being just an average player, and we've seen Gurley never really return back to the greatness that he was, and now he's not even on the Rams anymore. But the Panthers were in a pretty tough spot because. Without uh, without having uh, bringing uh, Ed in, uh, I'm sorry, Ed, Christian in um, uh, with Cam Newton's off the team now, and they don't really have an identity player. So you know, if they were in a, hard, a rock and hard place, if they didn't keep uh, a Christian, what would they have to show for their effort? Yeah, he's the face of the franchise, Edward. And yep. You, you got and and, and you, you you gotta hey, you gotta sell something to fill up that stadium. Hey, I just realized that uh, uh, we have a lot in col col common with the McCaffreys because my name's Edward and my son's name's Christian. <laughs> well, hey, I about that. Yeah, well, we can kind of substitute in one day, uh, one, one week uh, on, the, on, the, on the team. The Brown uh, Cafferties. Yeah, so, yeah, that, yeah, that'll work. Uh, uh, here, okay. yeah, here, here it is. Uh, Ed McCaffrey played for, the, played for the Giants first, 91 to 93. Oh. Okay. Then he played one season for the 49ers, uh, the, 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 the 94 season. And then uh, then he went to the Denver Broncos, 95 to 2000. That's what I thought. I thought he played for the 49ers first. And then after he got traded, that's when he did well. But 94, did he win uh, when uh, they – Yeah, that was, uh, that, that was that power team, that 94, 94. That was the super team. Yeah, exactly. With, with yeah, Steve Young. Sanders and Steve Young yeah. and Jerry Rice and – 
uh, Ricky Waters. Uh, that, that was a powerful team. Yeah, they decimated uh, San Diego. They did. Uh, yeah. Uh, and again, before we get on to our uh, favorite sports movies, one last thing about the NFL uh, 2020 season. The league will reopen its doors when every state has a, that has a franchise lifts its lockdown restrictions. So all 32 team facilities must be eligible to be open. Uh, so the NFL is at the mercy of 22 governors. Uh, can you imagine being one of those governors? Let's say, you know, Gavin Newsom's been very conservative with uh, the virus situation. You know, if he says, hey, you know what, I'm going to wait a few more months for this thing to really level off, uh, he or any, any governor, let's say, could be the guy who stops the season from starting. Are you well, nobody, nobody wants to be that guy. And in the case yeah. of uh, Gavin Newsom, he's got three NFL teams in his state. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I get, the NFL is a $10 billion a year business. And I believe uh, no decision will be made in the, un, 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 unless they're all on board with the decision. And that just permeates from the headquarters on out. And there's going to be an even bigger question is even if the NFL says it's ready to go, are fans going to be ready to, to fill in a 65,000 person stadium well, where you're literally sitting right next to somebody? Well, that, and, and that's the thing is maybe could they do something like this where they basically have to spread out the fans? You know, they, I mean, I don't I know. How you spread can... out the fans, but, but maybe there's some kind of by then, maybe there's some kind of quick way you can test each fan as they enter the, go through the turnstiles. Almost, that's a good almost, point. Like, almost like a scan, and uh, mm -hmm. and and then and then you just go right on through. But you're, you know, you're you're even 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 without the vi the, the coronavirus. I mean, you're you're at risk when you go to a stadium. There's signs all over the place that uh, that say, "Hey, you're not. We're not responsible if anything happens in the stadium." Right, but, but especially but especially people, in baseball, if you look the wrong people, way, you, know, you get hit by a foul ball. Then, uh, yeah, then yeah. sorry, too bad. Well, getting hit by a foul ball is one thing. Yeah. But, you know, getting a life-threatening disease because the person next to you is coughing the whole time. Yeah. And just getting a temperature reading only says that you're infected, that you currently are going through the virus worst infections right now. But people could be up to two weeks infectious on someone and not show any signs. Or you could be yeah. A positive and not carry any signs. And so we're, the more we're learning about the virus, we're, the more we're learning that it's really hard to predict if someone has it or not. Maybe they'll uh, just have Purell everywhere, and every time you go anywhere, they'll just put out your or hands. It's and would be the empty stadium concept. You know, that would be the, you know, the other thing. You know, they've been talking about it with baseball, having, you know, maybe a, a complex, one on the west and one on the east, and you have people there for a couple months with their families and literally just play out a season, you know, have games like every day that go on to give you a full season, even though, you know, you don't have them traveling. Because that's they the started, other thing. They, they, they just started playing professional baseball in China over the weekend with, wow. with, with, with no crowds. In, yeah. fact, in, fact, in fact, they have mannequins in the stands instead of actually. Sort of like uh, the movie The Interview. Um, yeah. I wonder, you know, it's, the thing with baseball, at least, you know, guy on first, you know, first baseman, second baseman, there's definitely distance. You know, the catcher and the umpire and the batter, okay, that's a little close. Uh, but for the most part, you know, except the guy sliding into second or something, you know, you, you're not, you don't really have too many of the players that close to each other, except for, like, in the dugout. Yeah, right. but you know what? I mean, baseball, probably more than any other sport, I mean, uh, there's a tremendous amount of chawing and spitting, and, I mean, it just <laughs> – that's just that is part of the, you know, almost all the players do it. Well, no, uh, don't, me, don't limit think, that. You know, golf, NASCAR, and tennis probably stand the largest chance of being able to come back yeah. in this environment because you do have the ability to separate everybody out as much as possible. Tennis, there's absolutely no con connect yeah. physical contact. And even hey, like, hey, hey, speaking of NASCAR, did you see? Did you see that that driver Kyle Larson got fired? Yep. Uh, yeah, as, as we tape this show for for the racial slur, at first, I, yeah. and and I could tell where it was going because when it first came out, for for the audience that doesn't know, there was a there was an eye racing event, and Kyle Larson, who's a NASCAR driver, was 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 in this. He thought his he thought his his headset was off, yeah. and he said the n word, but everybody heard it, and 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 at first he got suspended. 
And then he had to come out with the, the, the contrition statement. And yeah. then and then Chip Ganassi gave him the Ziggy. <laughs> Ern, I have played online video games since they started online video games. And I have played in a variety of different formats. I've never once thought it was appropriate to use the N-word no matter what was going on. Under any circumstances. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you don't use it where you, whether there's a mic in front of you or not. Right. You, use, you know, in the shower by yourself. I mean, right. it's, just, it's just more of a character issue than anything. You've always been thinking it. You don't say it unless you're thinking it. Unless yeah. That's, yeah, that's right. Used, used in a regular sort of conversational thing. And you know what? I mean, so far, that's the, one of the few things that online that, I've, that I haven't seen a right winger try to, to justify and say, you know, and, oh, he, he, he meant to sing Naker. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Right, <laughs> right. right. Okay, right. yeah, guys. No, oh. He was pronouncing the country of Niger. Yeah. Yeah. Niger. Niger. Yeah. Niger. 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 Yeah. Niger. yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay, so, uh, guys, we actually have to cut to our break. Uh, during the next break, think about what your favorite sports movie is, all right? Okay. All right. Uh, in the meantime, here's a here. this one's a little bit of a harder question, which I actually remember asking this about a year or so ago. Sugar Ray Robinson's son is a member of what sport? Now, you remember Sugar Ray Robinson? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yep. yep. Um, but what was his son uh, a member of what sport? Mm. All right. This, was, All right. this, this one's kind of hard. Don't right. look it up on your phone. <laughs> yeah. Sugar Ray Robinson. Burn. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. That's our trivia question. Stay with us. You're listening to Sports Econ 101. We'll be back with some closing comments. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Last time for today, I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vernon Glenn and Russell Jackman. Third trivia question, Sugar Ray Robinson's son is a member of what sport? Or was a member of what sport? Was a member of what sport? Yeah. I can uh, only... Uh, 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 traditional? Uh, traditional? No. One of the big four? Nope. Not one of the big four. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have to give you this one. You ready? Mm, yeah, go ahead. Roller derby. Wow, wow. that's a hard one. Yeah, oh, wow, that's, that's a hard one. Okay, guys. Wow, and Pavello. I used right to work thing. with one of the Bay Area's top roller derby guys, Icebox Thompson. I mean, oh. I, I used to love that when I was a kid watching that on TV. It's very similar to wrestling, where I think it was choreographed, but that's okay. Vern, favorite uh, sports movie? Uh, I'm gonna go with Hoosiers, man. I could watch Ooh. it every single day. Love it. Absolutely okay. love it. Vern, I mean uh, Russell. The Mickey Rourke's The Wrestler. Yeah, of I course. Just think that's, that's <laughs> of course. Of course. Of course for you. I was going to say, I can't say The Dreamer, which was about bowling, because that was actually not a terrible movie. Uh, good bowling, but terrible. Uh, I, like, I like Major League. Cause it's not really a real. I mean, it's Wait, kind of which fun. which Major League? The number one. Oh, the first one. Yeah, the first okay. one. Just yeah, a bit outside. Uh, yes, that's right. Yeah, just a bit outside. That, was, uh, that reminds me of a Bob Euchre story. Man. Uh, years ago, I was covering a, a Milwaukee Brewers game at Old County Stadium, and uh, uh, for for some reason, uh, the, the guy listed that was supposed to be, you know, next to the lineup, did not grab his bat. In fact, he went to the next guy. Yeah. And so, uh, and so, I'm looking at Euchre. I'm like, "Hey, did this guy a bat?" And he's doing the game, and he's like, "I don't know." <laughs> and, uh, and and so, and about a minute later, "Hey, fans, I'm looking at my score sheet, and I don't think." Blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> he, did, he, he should have given you credit for that one. All yeah. right, guys, here's our thoughts for the day. Someone once told me I lived in a fantasy land. <laughs> I nearly fell off my unicorn. And yeah. uh, no response is a response and a powerful one. Remember that. Yeah, I don't want to hear it, but just remember that, okay? Isn't that true, right? They say no well, It reminds me of the Rush song that says, if you have not made a choice, you, you if made, you not to decide, you still have made the choice. You've made right. the choice, right. All right. Tune in next week to Sports Econ 101. We're going to be discussing sports topics from a business perspective and asking more sports trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm Edward Brown. We'll see you next week. Adios. Adios. America. So long. All right, guys. That was for, fun. For a show where we have nothing to talk about, we sure have a lot to talk about. I know. It's a, hey, it's, there you go. Yeah, when things uh, happen next week, it'll be uh, interesting. You know what's funny, crazy? So my phone tells me, you know, to upgrade the system. Mm -hmm. and, and I kept pushing it off, pushing it off. Finally, I just had to do it. I lost my calendar after May 15th. 
it just really? yeah it just it just stopped showing stuff yeah i get i i i get those things you got to update you got to update yeah. and i usually but but because it's a company phone i wait till it to tell me it's okay to update uh, yeah I, 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 that, all that's uh, what you should do edward yeah. is log into your iCloud account uh-huh see it's an iphone right no it's a uh, samsung oh, it's a samsung okay then go to your google account and see if your calendar is still in well, Google. You know, interestingly enough, I think I'm okay. Because, uh, it's just I'm going to have to redo this because I can't sync it back to the phone. But on my computer, I can see a calendar. And it because, does yeah, show. all that should be yeah. stored in your Google Drive account. That one would think. Yeah. One might, just, you might want to sign out on your phone of your Google account and then re-sign I, back in. I don't know how you sign out of a phone. I've even tried to restart it. It doesn't work. But No, you, I'm saying sign out of your Google account from your phone. How do you sign you out? Sign back in and then restart your phone, and it may show the calendar. Uh, I, mean, I, don't know, I, don't know how to, I don't know how to sign out. <laughs> um, that's under the settings area and under your, uh, your accounts area. All right. Well, I'll, 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 I'll take a look at that. Not, right. You can only hire me. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, again, like I said, I, I do have it on my, uh, on my computer, and then I do have – uh, a Google calendar on here, which is separate from the calendar that I usually use. But all right, guys, uh, we are all set and we'll, uh, we'll try this again next week. How's that? Yeah. Just make sure you get that, the, the, the link to me a little bit a sooner. Little bit earlier. Yeah. I, sorry about that. All right, guys. All right. See you guys. See ya. All right, fellas. Hey.